So you grew up in here in L.A. Yeah. 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 And then who did you grow up looking up to in basketball? Uh, well, growing up in L.A., um, maybe one and only Kobe. Uh, you know. Uh, oh, he? Yeah, growing up, uh, watching Kobe just uh, inspired me so different ways, uh, not just in basketball, but just in life and having the mentality to be able to, uh, to do so many great things. So uh, that's how uh, my inspo was. That's a great role model, that's for sure. Okay, now you know I'm a Chicago girl. Yeah. We love Michael Jordan. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yes, we do. MJ, I like MJ. That's my dog, <laughs> MJ. You were supposed to meet him when you was a kid? Yeah, see, so what happened was... What so, happened? So I was at a... Uh, Michael Jordan basketball camp. Um, I probably was, I want to say 12, maybe 11, 12 years old. And at uh, Michael Jordan basketball camp, at the end of the camp, um, each kid get a, a one signed item from Michael Jordan. So obviously everybody stand in line. So I was playing, uh, at the time I was playing like a little pickup game. So my coach kept like, come, hurry up, it's your time. I'm like, no, like, no, I'm playing my pickup game. I'm not coming out of line. <laughs> so long story short, I end up winning my pickup game, but I didn't get a sign. Um, Michael Jordan. So you need, you was that focus. You was like, I'm playing my game. I did. Ooh, Michael, now, what? Now, now we're going to fast forward to 2000 and I want to say, well, I've been with, I've been with the brand probably almost like eight years or so. Um, I, I was with Nike at first, lead the brand, get a call from Michael Jordan. Um, he signed me as an athlete, so. Oh! So it worked. No, 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 it worked out. Yeah, yeah. So it worked out for the better. I'm um, blessed. Clearly. Now. <laughs> so oh my now God. I'm, I've been with the brand since, and I'm still uh, uh, under, the, under the Jordan brand, so. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. I know what it's like to, like, okay, sing a song and get prepared and be called at the last minute, like, Jennifer, get up and sing, and it happens to me all the time. But you stepped in for Simone Biles. How much time did you have, and what was going through your mind? What was that experience like? There was so much going through my mind. Honestly, a lot of people were telling me, it felt like 15 minutes. No, that felt like three seconds. <laughs> that was a three-second transition for me from my coach telling me, hey, you have to put your grips on to go on to bars, and you're also stepping in to go on beam. And I was just like, at first, I was like, no, this is just a dream. Like, I'm just dreaming it. No, she's fine. Like, everything's okay. But actually, no. And in that moment, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to have to put my feet into somebody's shoes that are bigger than mine. And just for me to realize mm. everything that I've gone through, I was just like, well, let's just show the world who you are. And I told her, I said, this is the last and only time I will ever be doing this for you because it was <laughs> the most scariest thing of my life. <laughs> it was scary, but at the end of the day, you know, we were able to just enjoy the moment and make sure everything was going to be okay. And you won <laughs> silver? Yes, we did, we did. Oh my goodness. Can, can, I, can I please see your medal? Of course. Oh my God, I get to see the medal. <laughs> wow. Here, you can open the top. You want, I get to open it? I don't even know how to Just touch it, girl. Wow. And this is look fancy. My <laughs> little horse ain't in nothing like Do y'all see this? This is amazing. She said I could put it on if I want. <laughs> Y'all can't tell me nothing now. Girl, you done came in here and put my head up. Oh my God, how heavy is this? Um, to be honest, I really don't know. I've never weighed it. Um, but it, wearing it, after we had put it on and then we had to do like all of our interviews and everything, I was like, my neck is gonna be sore for the next <laughs> three days. Because it's like all the weight, but at the end of the day, the reason why I tell people like, our silver isn't just our silver. We went through so much just to win our silver. Yes. And you know, like when I look at it, I always tell people, this is my shield of like all the aches and pains I've gone through. Everything that was just, you know, thrown at me different ways. And I kind of, you know, resemble it as a song. Everything kind of just is like thrown into pieces, right? Mm -hmm. Before it's the final thing. And so that's kind of how I see my medal. My so goodness. In my eyes, it's a gold. <laughs> it is a gold. <laughs> what has life been like since the championship win? Life has been crazy. I mean, it's yeah. great. I mean, I love that we, we won the national championship for Baton Rouge and being able to go home. But we can't go out how we used to be able to go out. <laughs> even just to the grocery store, we gotta have security, even going yeah. to class and stuff. It's been crazy, but we embrace yeah. it. I mean, we love the fans and everybody yeah. that, that has embraced us and showed us love. Like, it's super busy. It's super busy. It's busy? Oh, man. 
super busy. I, I haven't slept in a little while since the championship, but <laughs> it's been good. Like, you know, with NIL, we're able to capitalize off things like that. So just being busy, growing our fan base, and then growing women's basketball as a, as a sport. Are growing yeah. women's basketball. And that is for sure. Absolutely. That's all you got for me is absolutely. Has, oh, has, I got you. Okay. Yes, okay. I want to hear from all of you ladies. It just feels good to be celebrated. Um, wow. As you should be. Not just, not just as basketball players, but as young black women doing this on one of the largest platforms at a PWR representing LSU. Like, it's bigger than us. Um, it's overwhelming, but it's definitely worth it. Like, we champs. Like, <laughs> we the champs. Oh, I love that. Yes, look at that title. So, what, I mean, when you grew up having this dream and now you're in the middle of it or the beginning of it, did you ever think that you would, like, look, like y'all are leveling up women's basketball. Like, you're the faces of that. When I transferred to LSU, it was just for a first start. I just wanted a first start. I had been in college already for two years and then coming to LSU one year, I just wanted love and have a coach that was super confident in me. And being able to have a coach that was confident in me in one year to embrace me and be who I am. And I am unapologetically angel, and that's who I am, and they embrace that. So I didn't have the thought of winning a championship. Like, I wanted to win a championship, but I just wanted happiness. And then to get all of this, this was just topped it off. Like, yeah. The icing on the cake, <laughs> ain't it? Oh, my God. You also knew Kobe Bryant. Yeah, I did. Rest his soul. Yeah. What did you love most about him? <clears throat> Kobe Bryant. Thank you. Kobe Bryant might be the most brilliant athlete I've ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. um, his level of intellect yes. was just off the charts. He spoke three different languages fluently, English, Spanish, and Italian. Um, I believe he was trying to master Mandarin and German. Uh, I think he might have, he might have, I never heard him speak it to me, but wow. he was talking about doing it. Knowing him, he probably did it. Um, Five-time champion, league MVP, uh, you know, Hall of Famer, one of the greatest ever. But his level of focus and determination, I remember when I had my show, quite frankly, on ESPN2 in 2005, and, you know, I was feeling all hyped about myself, and I was like, man, they talking about I got a chance to be the next Oprah. And he looked at me and he said, forget Oprah, mm. Harpo. Mm. Harpo. He said, you do her. And he told me this in 2005. You do her, you, you do her a disservice when you just think of her as Oprah because she's so much more than that. This is what she brings to the table. She's a businesswoman. She's an entrepreneur. She's a producer. She's a boss, right. not just a talent. Remember that, and I never forgot that. And then, you know, years later, obviously 15 years later, 2020, he and I saw each other about three weeks before he passed away when we were both partying in Hollywood for New Year's Eve, and it was the happiest I had ever seen him. Mm -hmm. It was the first time in all the years that I've known him, and I had known him since 1996, and it was the first time that I ever saw him where he was feeling no pressure. Mm. It was like, yeah, I'm going to accomplish this. I'm going to move forward and strive to do this in the future. But everything I set out to do, I did. And he was such at peace. And his wife was just a few, his wonderful wife, Vanessa, was just a few feet yes. away when he was talking to me. And he was such, I'd never seen him that happy, that at peace. And that's why it just hit me so hard when he ultimately passed away. Thank you for sharing that with us. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch full episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.